Chances are, by the time you've finished Fire Emblem Awakening, your army might have looked a little something like this. But me? I don't feel like adding anybody to my army. But I'm not allowed to use any healing items in battle, so no vulneraries, no concoctions, no elixirs. So if a unit of mine is dying, eh, they better hope that they're by a cleric sooner or later. So I start up the game on hard classic mode, and I create my avatar with an increase in strength and a decrease in luck, since that's usually what I try to run with my avatars in Fire Emblem games. After Robin wakes up, we meet Krom, Lissa, and Frederick, and save a town from bandits, and oh my god, we are already off to a terrible start. After getting struck by a barbarian, Robin gets crit by a Myrmidon, who had a 2% chance of critting, bringing him to 1 HP. But right after that traumatic experience, Krom got crit by a 6% chance and was left with 2 HP. Jeez, I have no idea what's worse. These crit rates are how often you miss an attack in XCOM. It's 2% to miss. If we miss, I'm gifted 10 subs. Here we go. Now, I've never played Fire Emblem on hard mode. I've always done normal casual because I like to really relax and enjoy the experience. But if I'm gonna have experiences like these, I might need to heavily rely on Frederick for a good majority of this run. Taking out the bandits went pretty smoothly, ending with Robin getting a much unneeded critical hit on the boss. But I can say for certain that Lissa got a fat amount of experience here. I plan on promoting her to a Sage as soon as she gets to level 10, and then a Valkyrie if I'm able to, just so that she can fend for herself, so the quicker she gets to that point, the better. After the Risen appear, we get our next unit, Sully, a Cavalier. Ultimately, I want to make her my Wyvern Lord, because they're one of my favorite classes in Fire Emblem, and I wanted to have one on my roster. Unfortunately, she's accompanied by Virian, who is not an original Shepherd, so he's unusable. I do move him around just so that he's out of harm's way, but I never had him fight any enemies, and I took him out of my available units as soon as possible. This level was pretty okay. Not too many close calls, but you might notice that I did end up changing the combat animations in the game. Even on my PC, Citra kind of lags every now and then whenever Robin casts a Thunder spell, so I turned it off for now, since we're going to be getting a few more units that are able to cast spells. I stick to having Frederick take out the enemies that worry me a bit, specifically this one archer who gets taken out with a 3% crit. Krom and Robin got targeted quite a bit by some fighters, and thankfully Lissa was here to save the day, and we came out of this level with no casualties. Before we continue, if you're enjoying the content, be sure to hit that like button down below, subscribe, and ring the bell for more content. And while you're at it, let me know what your favorite Fire Emblem games are, and what your least favorite Fire Emblem games are. I'd have to say for me, my favorite is probably Fire Emblem Awakening, with Sacred Stones being a very close second, but I'd have to say that my least favorite Fire Emblem game is Shadows of Valentia on the 3DS. I thought that that one was just very disappointing. Chapter 2 actually gives us three new team members. Stahl, who's another Cavalier, however this time he's sword-based compared to Sully, who's lance-based. I plan to keep him as a Paladin, but a Bow Knight might actually be pretty good too, once I get access to some second seals. We also get Muriel, who I plan to turn into a Sorcerer. Since we're not getting access to Tharja or Henry, who is my favorite unit in the game, Muriel is actually our only option here for a Dark Magic user, and she just won't cut it as a Dark Knight, which is my favorite class. And then we also get Vake, who I ultimately plan to make a Berserker, since it will be a really great way to make some easy money due to a skill he gets pretty early on. Also, I know that they have that whole Vake losing his axe joke to introduce trading to newcomers, but where is the realism behind that? Don't you think that he would have noticed? He dropped his axe? I'd assume that since it's made out of iron, it's gotta be kinda heavy. Y you'd think that he'd be like, oh shit, I just dropped something that's kinda critical for me to survive. I, I should probably go pick that up. Anyway, here's where we start to get introduced to dropping weapons, which is going to save us tons and tons of money in the long run. Which is great, because I plan to buy as many reeking boxes as possible, so that I can get efficient ways to grind in the future. Anyway, this level actually came down to the wire a few times. Sully, Vake, and Lissa all got brought down very low by some soldiers, but they were able to hold out and get some much needed experience. Muriel also needs a bit of assistance in order to really get going, so a lot of her grinding is having our other units weaken enemies enough for her to take them out. 
Once she's able to start doubling people, she can do insane amounts of damage with the right tones. I know this might seem super lame to more serious Fire Emblem players, but here's where I start to deploy my huddle strategy, which I've been doing <laughs> ever since I started playing. Basically, I put two strong units in the front to bait out the tougher opponents, and then I basically use my other units to fight them from a distance. It proves very beneficial for Sully and Muriel, and Lissa, as always, got a fat amount of experience thanks to her constant healing. I'm getting pretty worried though. Her heal staff is getting pretty low on uses, and shops don't open till the completion of chapter three. So we might actually be in a bit of trouble if I get too crazy with healing. In the end, we suffered no casualties and Muriel even got to kill the boss. Chapter three gives us two more units, Sumia, a Pegasus Knight who I just plan to make a Falcon Knight, and Kellum, a Knight who I plan to make an Assassin. There are some really good items that we can get that are locked behind chests, and since Gaia and Anna are not usable in this run, I'm gonna really need somebody with lock touch in order to get access to those items. And I really don't trust myself with remembering to buy chest keys and then forgetting to bring them on the right people. Also, Kellum is our only unit that I can think of that can become a thief aside from Robin. And I plan to just keep him as a Grandmaster. If I wanna promote him to other classes just to get skills, I will but he's ultimately going to stay as a Grandmaster. I rank up a few supports before we begin and make our way to Raimi, the boss, but as you can imagine, once you kill that one enemy with a hammer, she's an absolute cakewalk. Lissa's heal staff does break during this level, but thankfully it broke just as we were finishing up. Shops open upon defeating Raimi, and we're able to pick up some really nice stuff here, actually. I make sure to pick up a brand new heal staff for Lissa, but I also make sure to go buy some better tomes for Robin and Muriel since Muriel's fire spells really just aren't cutting it. Reeking boxes are also incredibly out of my price range, so it's gonna be a while until we can grind. We also unlocked the level that gives us access to Donal, but I wasn't too sure how to go about continuing here. Do you guys want me to stick with only the story missions, or are you guys okay with me doing the paralogs and the xenologs? Of course, if there's optional characters that you can recruit, I'm not going to recruit them because they're not usable. But be sure to let me know in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button and hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for more notifications. With that, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.